Yo, what is going on boys? Snides here. We're back with another video and today we're going to be talking about some hitting tips for you guys. Now we are still in early access of the game right now. I wanted to get this hitting tips video out as soon as possible so you guys can watch it, practice and get better as soon as you can. I wanted to, I wanted to try to get this video out before the full game launches here on I believe Monday. But yes, Hitting tips videos, let's get right into it. If you guys are new right here, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on the video if this helped you guys out. Let's start off with the settings. All right, so if we click on the settings option here and go into gameplay, they changed up the menus a little bit when it comes to the settings. So if you're having a hard time finding where the PCI, the camera view and all that stuff is, they're all actually in different tabs now. But of course, starting here on the general tab, uh, set this to whatever you want it to be. This doesn't really matter when it comes to hitting, but when you're looking for PCI and all that stuff is going to be in the control option right here. So just hit right bumper once and you're in the control options. So if you want to go ahead and pause the video, you guys can copy everything that you see here. Uh, these are all the settings that I'm going to be using. Um, I'm not gonna go over every single one of these cause they're not necessarily all super duper important. But again, go ahead and copy all of these. But I'll go over the most important ones here and swing input definitely is going to be buttons. Hitting interface, make sure this is on zone. Do not do directional. Zone is definitely the most consistent hitting interface and you have the most control here. A couple more down, go into the PCI anchor. I keep this off. Um, I will go over what this is when I hop into a game. But PCI Anchor for me, I just don't like it, but I will show you here later. If you like it, go ahead and try it. And then going a couple more down, plate coverage indicator. This is your PCI. You're gonna make sure that this is on. Um, going to PCI Center, I have diamonds, PCI Inner, we've got basic, PCI Outer, we have none. And then PCI Color is yellow and my transparency, which is the brightness of the PCI is right at 60% and then my PCI fight fade out I have it to none and then all the way at the bottom for vibration you're going to want to go ahead and turn that off so for this control section here the biggest things is going to be zone hitting and then going down to the PCI um, I'm not going to sit here and say this is the best PCI but it is the best one for me you're going to want to go ahead and try to mess with these PCI uh, settings and find which one works best for you this one works best for me go ahead and try it if it works for you um, I know a lot of people like to use the PCI color white I simply don't like that because I feel like I lose the baseball because it is the same color and then PCI transparency I know a lot of people like to use it at 100 sometimes they like to use it at like 20 percent I like it at 60 I want to be able to see it but I don't want it to block the baseball. So 60% I feel like is that sweet spot. So yeah, that was the control tab. Going over one with the right bumper, we're gonna go over to camera. This is where your hitting view comes in and I'm using strike zone. Strike zone to me is by far the best camera. It gives you the closest look. You're gonna lose the fact that you can't see your batter, which it is what it is. I just think strike zone is the best. It gives you the best opportunity to read what the pitcher is doing. And it's it's really, really good. Um, the biggest problem that people have with strike zone is that they feel like it might be a little bit too close. I think a lot of people have issues with strike zone with low change ups. It is a little bit tougher to read those lower change ups. So if you don't like strike zone and you're having issues with those change ups, maybe try strike zone two. But these are the only two hitting views that I recommend strike zone one and strike zone two you see all the top players in the world that play this game they all use strike zone there's a reason for it and then lastly when it comes to the settings is the in play offense now as you can see here I use dynamic simply because this is the coolest looking view when you hit uh, a home run when you get that animation when you get a perfect perfect this is the coolest looking view i use dynamic simply just because of that um, if you don't care about all that i do recommend changing this to maybe high or medium high is definitely very very good for being able to read those pop flies that you hit you're going to be able to tell early if the ball is going to drop or not so you can move your runners in certain situations Medium is also really good with that as well, but high is definitely gonna give you a better opportunity to read the ball a little better. But if you're here just to see dingers, pick dynamic. 
So those are all the settings that I use. I think those are the most important ones. Um, definitely give those a try and figure out your PCI that you like the most. So let's jump into a game here. So I jumped into a game real quick here and I wanted to show you guys how the PCI anchor works. Uh, I don't use it because I feel like it just doesn't work for me, but it might work for you. So I did. I do want to cover it real quick here. There's a couple different options. PCI anchor preset. We're going to start with that just so I can show you how this exactly works. And then you can also, this is new, you can set the PCI Anchor reset to a game. You can reset it per inning or per batter. I'm gonna keep it on game. And then your PCI Anchor dots, I'm gonna keep it on so you guys can see how this exactly works. So let's jump into the game here. Uh, as you can see here, we've got the dots in the middle right here. This is going to let us know where our PCI is anchored at. And I mean, you can you can turn this grid off if you don't like it. I personally feel like it's kind of pointless. You don't really need it. If you know where you want to anchor your PCI, you know exactly where to do it at. Uh, so how PCI anchor works, all you do is switch your PCI to where you want to start it and then click your left stick N and that will make your PCI stay and start in that spot. So as the pitch is coming, you can adjust to the pitch that way now this is i don't know this is where it's weird because i'm the type of person where i like to have freedom with my pci once you lock it in i feel like you just i don't know the pci kind of changes it's weird it feels like you just don't have as much control um i do think pci anchor is good for people that don't like the pci starting in the middle um they feel like they can't see the ball as well so they might start the pci low they might start it high they might start it i don't know maybe it's just a weird quirk for some people they like to keep the pci at a certain spot before the pitch comes in but yes that's my opinion on pci that's how it works let me show you the other setting if you go to pci anchor and change it over to free this is also new to the game this year um, this is a little more freedom with the PCI. We'll show you how it works here. As you can see here, the dots are gone and you can literally start the PCI anywhere. Instead of being forced to start the PCI within those dots that I showed you before, now you can start this bad boy way over here if you want. It doesn't matter where. It gives you more freedom, I guess. And I guess they were listening to the community a little bit where the PCI anchor last year just didn't give you as much freedom. So now you have the free PCI anchor option where you can start the PCI anywhere. All right, so now we're jumping into practice mode here and I wanna show you guys a couple approaches that I like to use as a hitter. So I've been playing this game since like MLB The Show 18 and I, had, I didn't really get good at the game until uh, end of MLB The Show 20. It took me a while to get good and my biggest problem was hitting. One of my biggest problems that I have with this game is lack of patience. I was swinging at everything in earlier MLB The Shows and I had no plate intelligence at all. I promise you, a lot of beginners are gonna have this problem because they wanna get in this game quick, they wanna jump in here and they wanna hit home runs, but it doesn't work that way in ranked seasons. People are gonna throw a lot of balls, especially if they see that you're chasing pitches. So my biggest tip when it comes to that is take the first pitch. You taking the first pitch is showing against your opponent that you're going to be a patient hitter. You might not actually be a patient hitter, but you taking pitches is going to show that you're not going to be chasing a lot of pitches here. And you're you're gonna be able to see more pitches that way too. So uh, fastballs, you know, sliders, if you're not seeing them very well, just take the pitch, see another one. Live to fight another at bat and just try to drive up that pitch count as much as you can a really good approach of mine is to it's, it's just like real life i will sit here and i will wait until that high and end pitch i really like high and end pitches i will wait until that happens until i get two strikes so i'm going to sit here and wait and make them pitch to me driving up that pitch count is huge because you're going to drain the pitcher's energy by a lot so patience is key make sure you sit in here and wait for your pitch you guys got to remember that taking a strike is not the end of the world getting down in an 01 count is not the end of the world you guys have to take some strikes sometimes you're gonna you're gonna want to see your opponent's tendencies and see how he pitches you next a really really good tip that i have that i actually started doing at the beginning of mlb the show 22 
was starting my PCI right at the pitcher's release, right? So we start the game, right? And I'm going to take the first pitch just to watch where this pitcher's release is, right? So I just watched it. I see where his release is. And now I'm going to start that PCI right around in that spot where he releases the ball. And then I'm going to follow the ball with my PCI as the pitch is coming in. This is going to make you pay attention a little more to the ball as it's coming in. I'm not sure what it is, but once you put that PCI on the ball, you automatically just start following it with your eyes. It's a really, really good method. A lot of the top players use it. We take pitches to watch where that pitcher's release is. If you're having trouble following the ball with the PCI, I do recommend this method, and that is starting your PCI on the inside corner before the pitch comes in. Uh, for whatever reason in MLB The Show, a lot of people like to throw inside fastballs. So the name of the game, if you guys can get on fastballs, you are way ahead of a lot of people in this game. If you can figure out how to hit, how to hit high and end fastballs, you're in good hands because a lot of people do it. So cheating that PCI to the inside just by a little bit is going to be able to give you that advantage to be able to beat those inside fastballs a little bit faster. Big tip is going to be those lefty lefty matchups that we all hate. I feel like lefty lefty matchups is something that a lot of people struggle with. I still struggle with it to this, to this day, but once I started using this method, I started to get a little bit better at it. What I like to do when it's a lefty lefty matchup is I literally will sit here and wait until I get that high and end fastball. I will literally wait for that pitch until I get two strikes. Once I started doing that, I started hitting a lot of home runs off of lefties and I was able to hit the ball a lot better for whatever reason, especially if opponents see a lefty lefty matchup, they really want to throw that high and end fastball because to be honest with you, if you're not ready for it, that high and end fastball is hard to catch up on, especially for those, you know, the Randy Johnsons out there, those, those high velocity left-handed pitchers are hard to catch up on, especially if they throw it high and in. So if you sit there and that's all you're waiting for, you're going to be able to catch up to those balls a little bit quicker. I'm telling you, this is a really, really good method on a lefty-lefty matchup because people love to throw that pitch a lot. My next big tip here is finding a timing mechanism. You guys have probably already noticed it. Before the pitcher releases the ball, I am spinning my PCI in circles like this. This is my timing mechanism. Right before the pitcher throws the ball, I like to spin this around about three or four times. And then right as he lifts that leg up, that's when I start moving my PCI to where I want to do it. Right now, I am trying to follow the pitcher's uh, release and follow the ball that way. So what I do is warm up, spin the PCI. You're keeping your thumb warm this way too. And as soon as he lifts his leg up, that's when I cheat the PCI up. So I'm spinning it, keeping it warm. It's kind of like, you know, how batters shake their bats before the pitch comes in. It's the same thing. They're staying warm. They're ready to go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and try it here. Right when he lifts that leg up is when you want to come out of the spinning of the stick and then start cheating up a little bit. So it's a really good method. It's very similar to real life. Keeps you warm, keeps you loose. You don't want to be stagnant. You don't want to just sit here and then react to the pitch because that's going to cause a lot of jamming your stick to the corners and you're going to be missing a lot of pitches that way. And then lastly, a couple more tips here. I know everybody says it, but I'm just going to recommend one thing that is cheap. It's very affordable and that is getting your hands on a control freak i only use one i don't use it for pitching and i use the short control freak i use a pair of galaxies you can get these bad boys for like 12 to 20 dollars they're very very cheap there's some other ones as well they're a lot cheaper but i just feel that these are the best ones on the market they give you really good grip and it gives you a very good range of motion on the pci this is game changing I didn't use a piece or I didn't use a control freak until MLB the show 21 and man I wish I knew about these sooner once I started using this bad boy I was able to catch up to a lot of those quick fastballs coming in inside it's a huge difference guys and then last but not least I know this is cliche practice 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 I 
promise you, you guys, this is this is one of those things where it's just not going to immediately start working out for you. Like I said, I did not start getting good at this game until late MLB The Show 20, and I started playing this in 18. So repetition is huge. When you guys hop into practice, don't go in practice mode. I know that's what a lot of people say, but I work 40 to 50 hours a week, and I don't have enough time to be jumping into practice mode. Practice on many seasons. Practice on conquests, and when you play those games, uh, put it on higher difficulties. Put it on Hall of Fame when you play on Conquest or many seasons, and that'll get you the practice that you need. Um, if you're looking for practice before you jump into a ranked seasons game, jump into events. Again, many seasons. Set the right difficulty. Get some swings in before you go into ranked seasons. You don't want to practice in the middle of a ranked seasons game. So yeah, guys, those are all of my tips for hitting. Hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit. If you guys have any questions, throw a comment down below. I will answer all of your questions. Really hope this helped you guys out. Um, if you guys are no money spent people and you want to follow the series, be sure to check that out. We've got a playlist for it. it should be episode two coming out here this week. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it for me. Let's hit some dingers. I'm out of here. Peace.